Well, my parents used drugs. My dad sold drugs. He was a biker. He sold drugs. So I seen them doing that, and they always tried to hide it, but I knew what it was. And then, you know, being abused, I have a lot of emotional trauma and, and drama in my life, you know what I mean? And so I just started using to get by, I mean, like to get rid of the mental pain. My name's Paul, um, born and raised in Kensington. Uh, my addiction, uh, I've been addicted to opiates since I was 13. I'm 40 now, but uh, I'm on Suboxone now, but I still smoke crack. And, I mean, um, I grew up with an abusive mother. Uh, a stepfather adopted me at, you know, I mean, a year old. Uh, my mom abused me until I was like 16, physically, mentally, you know what I mean? Um, you know, she was in her addiction too. She was a methamphetamine addict. So, I have two daughters. Uh, one's 21 and one's 10. Where are they currently? Uh, my 21-year-old lives with my sister-in-law. Uh, I don't get, I don't see her. I haven't seen her since she was eight. But my 10-year-old lives with my uh, uh, mother's daughter, uh, my girlfriend. Um, she's 10. I see her uh, off and on. Do you have sisters and brothers? I have a brother and a sister. Uh, my sister, she's never did a drug in a day in her life. Uh, and my brother, he's, he does pot, you know what I mean? And they both work. They don't really have much to do with me because of my addiction. I understand. How far do you go in school? Um, I graduated high school and then I went back to college when I was about 25. I did about a year and a half. Oh, okay, that's, that's amazing, man. Why do you drop out? Yeah, uh, addiction. Addiction. Yeah, I got in the way. Okay. Do you have any favorite childhood memories you can think of? Hmm. Favorite childhood memories? Wow. I don't know. I you know I love being with my 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 brother. See, I raised my brother and sister basically. You know, I was like the I had to grow up early. You know what I mean, so. I actually like taking care of them, so that I would say those are my favorite childhood when they were little. Your current situation, what is it? My current situation is uh, I'm, well technically I, I just got out of jail. I was in jail for six months, retail theft, due to stealing for drugs and stuff like that. Um, I'm in a housing program called Pathways to Housing and I'm currently waiting for an apartment um, right now, but uh, I can take 90 days still. I mean, I had an apartment before I went to jail, but I lost it because I went to jail. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. What do you do for work? Nothing right now. I'm, you know, I steal. You know what I mean? I, I boost. You know what I mean? Sometimes my girlfriend helps me out. You know? So you out here with your girlfriend? No, no. She lives, she's got six years clean. She lives uh, with my sister and my daughter, actually. And I just got off the of opiates, actually. I'm on Suboxone, uh, the, 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 the shot. And, um, but I still mess around, you know what I mean? I, a little crack here and there, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Not totally clean, but I'm trying. Yeah, that was the, that's the epitome of my life. I mean, I used to, I've done heroin since I was 13, and then now this fentanyl and trank stuff almost killed me the last run. So. You're, you're alive for a reason. Right. What all have you lost due to your addiction? Huh. Everything, family, friends, my teeth, <laughs> I mean. I got a bad heart, I mean, I, I've lost a lot. Jobs, just everything almost. Yeah, and your 
Your longest time you had clean, what was it? Uh, I had 24 months clean That's before amazing. my dad died in uh, 19, uh, 20. That's amazing. What triggered you? Uh, well, it was he died and I stayed clean for a couple more months later. Then I went homeless again and then I broke up with my wife and it was just too much. I was on the streets and I relapsed. So what's a day in your life out here look like? Well, right now it's mostly uh, I'm looking for work. Like I'm really trying to do the right thing right now. Yeah, I mean, I still dib and dab you know, I'm here and there, but I look for work. I go to my probation officer. I go to court when I have to. Um, you know, just basic things, doctors, therapists. You know, I mean, I'm in all that stuff right now, trying to get things together yeah what are all your challenges that you that you face on a daily basis as an addict <sighs> money uh, you know and, and just trying to maintain a de normal life like I, I I use when I'm bored and I'm alone you know I mean I want to be with my wife and kid but it's just not possible right now but I think that's the main reason I use because my uh, my loneliness and I'm by myself. I mean, I really don't. I have a lot of trauma, I have nightmares and stuff like that. I and I don't feel comfortable in my skin unless I'm with them. That's like my goal to be with my family. What are some horror stories that you have seen or heard about or that has happened to you since you've been out here? Whew. All right. Uh, I've seen. People get killed in front of me. I mean, like literally their brains blown out over $5. I mean, uh, I've had somebody, I used to get high shooting up. I had somebody rip a needle out my arm and stick it in their arm. I mean, blood in it and everything. I've been jumped, I've been stuck up, I've been held for ransom. I mean, like I've been through it all. I mean, like jails, institutions and death, they say, and I've pretty much did it all except the death. And I mean, the addiction thing, yeah, I know I shouldn't be dibbing and dabbing, but that's what helps me maintain one. Once I'm, uh, I'm secure, like working and in my place, I know that I'll just, this little dibbing and dabbing, a little float. I'll never use opiates, I know that. As long as I'm on Suboxone, I'll be okay. That's right. what I say. I mean, you never know what'll happen in the future, but, that's, I've been through it all and I don't want to be there again. If you can go back in time, what would you s say to your younger self? I tell myself to stay in school, can further your education, and just don't do it. You know I mean, just don't pick it up because I know it, it seems bad and hard now, but if you persevere, you'll, man, you'll, you'll, you'll make it. You know what I mean? Because I know if I never picked up, I'd probably be a billionaire right now. What are some of your skills and hobbies? I'm a writer. I love to write. I write poetry, short stories, uh, just get my journaling. I love to read. Um, and I, I like to give back. I like to help other addicts. Uh, I like to feed them. Like if I have a two dollars, I get one away. I mean, like I'm that type of person. You know I mean, like, and I wish I had a million dollars because that's what I, I'd be a philanthropist type of person. You know I mean, I would, I definitely give back. And kids, kids, it was a, always a passion. I love helping little kids, and you know I mean, like I, I was always good with that. But that's that's great, man. You have some really great qualities about yourself and the world needs more of it. Let's talk about your tattoo. Was, was that your first tat? No, it wasn't. Actually, my first tattoo was this one. What does it say? It says Blaze. That's what they used to call me when I was young. Or in jail, they still call me it. Blaze? Blaze. Blaze. Okay, wow. You blaze. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I was always blazing up. And then this was my last tattoo. It's from my when my dad died. He was a he was into the Grateful Dead. I mean, and my my dad was my best friend. Like he he no matter what I did, he was one of the only ones that never gave up on me. Like 
no matter what, he was there for me. And when he passed, it, I still cry at night over him, you know what I mean? Yeah. If without my wife, I wouldn't have made it. Understood. And what about the one on your leg? What does that say? That is uh, the all-seeing eye. Um, that's for, you know, like Egyptian and, you know what I mean? All, uh -huh. I see everything. Oh, yeah. Where you got those tats done? Out here or in jail? Some of them are in jail, some of them are in uh, parlor, some of them are friends. I mean, I got about 21 total. Right. Most of them are in jail, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, brother, we're almost done. What are your short-term goals now? My short-term goal is uh, to get my housing. Actually, I go tomorrow for a, a job fair. So if I get a job, oh man, that's my main goal right now is to get a job so I can help my wife and, and daughter because they're in a tight situation and, and, and be able to put, take care of myself without stealing. I'm so tired. I don't want to steal no more. I mean, like I don't want it. It's karma. I mean, karma comes back to bite you in the ass and it really does. And I believe wholeheartedly. I steal because I must, you know what I mean, because I need it. But. I want to work. I want to be normal again. You know what I mean, I, and that's my goal. If you had three wishes, what would your three wishes be? My three wishes would be number one that both my daughters never see addiction and, and make a life for themselves greater than mine. Number two would be to spend the rest of my life with my significant other and my daughter to adulthood and my third goal is to see my daughter my daughters see grandchildren it's awesome i wish all those things come true for you brother you deserve it and this one is to take us home what would you like the world to know about you i would like the world to know about me um that I'm not just an addict, uh, not just about me, just about all addicts. We're not just junkies out here trying to get our next fix. All of us have skills, all of us have, have family. You know what I mean, we all have brothers and sisters. So when you walk past us, just don't look through us or by us. You know what I mean, have compassion. Beautiful. We about to take off. Is there anything you're in need of that the world can help you with? Love. <laughs> Just love and support. That's all I need. Awesome. Okay, AML family. Paul, if people would like to email you, send things for you, do you have a way they can get in touch with you or email or anything? Yes, it'll be, uh, it's uh, Leary Paul 2. Spell it for us. L E A R Y P A U L 2 at gmail.com. And do you check your email often? Every day. Okay, yo, AML family, let's support Paul. He's a very good guy. He needs all the encouragement and love he can get, and that's what we're all about lifting our brothers and sisters up. So we about to take flight. Remember, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time. We out there. Peace out.